Well, hello everyone. I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I'm so glad that you've been able to join with us. We are just beginning a study in 2 Samuel. We're doing it locally a couple nights a week on Monday evening, really one night a week and Tuesday mornings. And we've also got a, a great deal, a great number of people who are joining us online. And so I thank you for that. Uh, in this week's lesson, which is really lesson zero, we just passed out the workbooks to uh, 2 Samuel. We did a little bit of time in the local classes doing some housekeeping kind of things and refreshing our memory about some stuff. So I thought I'd do something quite similar here for just a few moments that we have online. Uh, those of y'all who are joining with us, I'm going to keep us uh, sort of abreast of what's happening, tell you what chapters we're reading in Second Samuel and things like that. As we go along, I'll do this predominantly through our uh, Facebook group. So if you haven't joined that, I encourage you to do that. So let me just show you a couple things that we did. First of all, uh, we looked at my website. I've spent some time here recently just put some things together. And so you're free to browse this at, uh, anytime you want to. But I wanted to point out a couple of things. If you will look at it, you'll see that on the right-hand side, there's a column that has all sorts of information up and down. And uh, you click on any of these things right here, and it takes you to a different page. One page in particular. If you just scroll down like this, you'll see Bible Resources. If you click on Bible Resources, it'll pop up and you'll see this page right here. And this is just some stuff that I find very, very useful. Uh, as a matter of fact, this first item is something we're going to look at here in just a few moments. You can download it on your own. Uh, the eSword Bible software, that's uh, a completely free if you run a Windows computer you can use that I use it in the Windows portion of my Mac computer but we won't get into all that right now uh, the commentary right here is very useful constable this precept Austin website is amazing if you click that button right there you'll find more information than you ever wanted to find as a matter of fact if you scroll all the way down You'll see on the right-hand side here that I have resources for uh, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. If you click 2 Samuel resources, it'll actually pop up to this page right here. And you can uh, go to the straight uh, Precept Austin 2 Samuel resource site. So anyway, if you just scroll up down here, you'll see things that are all, I mean, all sorts of things. Uh, there's some of my CDs that I've done through the years. You can just click on there. You can listen to them. You can download them. There's previous Bible studies that we've done in Joshua and Judges. All of Revelation is here and the video. Uh, what I plan on doing is posting a video. It's always going to be less than 10 minutes. That way I can put it on YouTube and everybody can see it. And it'll be just a synopsis of the lesson, just a short version of what the lesson was for that week. A couple other things just very quickly. Uh, back to the original page, the blog, uh, blog and podcast. Um, I write a, a somewhat regular, sometimes it's uh, two or three times a week, sometimes it's five times a week. Uh, just a blog what's going through my mind at that point in time. Also, we have a pray for a prayer list that's right here on this page, so you're free to pray for all these folks and, and look at them. And then lastly, uh, here's my Facebook page, and if you click Facebook, you'll go there, and here is the group uh, for the um, precept class that we do. Now, very quickly, here's the other item I wanted to look at. Whenever you study the Word of God, here is what you do. I'm going to cover this very quickly. You can download this and just examine this. Uh, this is how we study precept upon precept. First of all, we begin with prayer. We pray over everything at the very beginning. Okay, So don't ever open the Word of God without saying, Lord, help me to understand what it is you want me to see. Next, point number two, you, say, you see that we ask the five W's and the H's. And you say, well, what is that? Some people refer to this as the reporter questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. And when you're reading the Word of God, have these questions just going through your mind, and you'll be amazed at how the Lord will use that to open up His Word. Uh, number three is we mark the key words and phrases. Now, fear not, because as you do the homework, if you're doing it within the workbook with us, uh, they will guide you through this. They'll say something like, uh, today in your homework, uh, read chapters one and chapter two and mark key words. And key words, and you'll learn how to do this as we go along. Quite often, they'll tell you, they'll say, hey, uh, mark the word sin or mark the word death or mark uh, certain time periods. We'll see more about that in a minute. They will lead you in this. As you develop this skill, you'll be amazed at how much information will just leap off the page at you. And then the next thing is to uh, look for a list. Okay? Because when you start observing key words, uh, for instance, in the example that's here on the page, uh, this it comes out of an epistle. And often a key word will be who wrote the letter. 
who wrote the letter, who received the letter. And if you go through and just mark who the recipients were, all of a sudden you'll start seeing certain elements about them, and those will be developed into lists. Also, watch for contrast and comparisons uh, within the language, okay? Note expressions of time. That's very, very important. Expressions of time. And then you identify chapter themes. Now, all of this is us doing what we call observing the Word of God. So much of the body of Christ is deceived because they don't know what the Word of God says. They may know what somebody told them. They may know what a particular uh, denominational doctrine is, but they don't know what the Word of God is and what it says for themselves. And all of this is part of what we refer to, refer to as observing the Word of God. And we really do a threefold approach. And this is not something we do like point one, point two, point three. We It, it does have a sequential element to it, but quite often you'll see that you're doing all three of these elements at the same time. The first of this is observing. So all of these seven little things we just looked at is observing. And as we are observing, and particularly once we observe, we interpret the Word of God. Observation gives us a correct understanding of the Word. Interpretation lets us understand what that means, what we've just seen. So remember a couple things, that when you're interpreting, uh, that context rules. The example I love to uh, use is this, that you there is a portion of the Bible that says there is no God. That there is no God. Of course, if you know the entire context of that, you know what it says. It says a fool says in his heart, there is no God. So context rules. Also point number two, always seek the full counsel of the Word of God. Now I know sometimes people struggle with that because they say, well, I don't know the Bible. Well, that's the reason we're studying. That's also the reason that the Lord has given his body the way that he did. Nobody has complete knowledge and information, but the Lord has revealed through his Word and he enables people within the body to study and to read and he will guide us to the truth that we need. Number three, remember that Scripture will never ever contradict scripture. If you run across something that you think is a contradiction, that's just an opportunity to learn. It just means that we're ignorant of something. We're unlearned about something. Uh, number four, don't base your conviction on an obscure passage of scripture. There's a bunch of examples of that, but it simply means this. Sometimes people will see something and they will misinterpret it. Uh, the end of Mark's a great example of that, about picking up of the snakes and that kind of thing. That's been misinterpreted through the years where people would worship by picking up rattlesnakes and copperheads and things like that. Well, that's not exactly what that scripture means. I think what it means is what you see over later in Paul's life when he was building the fire one time and he reached down and an asp grabbed a hold of him. Well, he should have been dead within a few minutes. But the Lord watched over him, protected him, and the people saw what's happened. They said, hey, we think you're a god now. Well, Paul says, I'm not a God, but I'll tell you about the real God. Okay, I'll tell you about the real God. Point number five, that we're to interpret Scripture literally. Now, the Scripture does have metaphor in it. It does have analogies in it. But all of these are interpreted as in, upon literal face value and reading. And then number six, that you uh, look for a single meaning of the passage. Now, in our last moment together right here, once we observe and once we interpret, then we allow the Lord to apply His Word to us. See, the, the church has uh, made so many mistakes through the years related to this. They might have observed correctly, but they interpreted wrong. They might have observed correctly, interpreted correctly, but then they applied the man's understanding and not God's reproof and God's correction. As we study the Word of God, this is how we approach it. And when we do this, you're going to find that the Lord's going to do amazing, amazing things in your life. Download this little uh, chart right here. Read it, study it, meditate upon it. Make use of the information that, that uh, is available to you. Go to my website, check out all that kind of stuff, and just watch what God does. Again, I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.